and the right to use and the remain of your life. This represents AX plus B or AX minus B. So you simply solve for X. It's X plus 3 equals 0. Therefore, X will be equal to negative 3. In other words, in the place of X, you are going to put negative 3. So it's 3 like that. You put negative 3 wherever there is X. Negative 3 minus 21. This is, let's say this is the polynomial Gx. So it's Gh negative. Like that. So you are to find the remainder if this is divided by x plus 3. And then what's the answer here? If you substitute by negative 3, what's the answer? Negative 36. So this is the answer you have obtained after substituting by ax minus b, which is our ax minus b here in this case we've got x plus Three. You simply solve for x. After finding out that x is negative 3, put in the place of x here, and then you find out the answer is negative 3. This is our remainder. This is our remainder. Our remainder is negative 36. Right. So to go back and find the polynomial, We've got a polynomial f of x. A polynomial f of x. This is a polynomial. And then we've got what we call our divisor. Our divisor. Which is ax minus b. This is our divisor. Our divisor, and then we've got what we call the quotient. The answer that you obtain when you are dividing, we call it the quotient. That's the quotient. So, for you to go back and find your polynomial, the polynomial f of x will be equal to your divisor times your quotient plus the remainder. You are going to get your polynomial. Let's see if we can obtain that. Our divisor there, we've got g of x, we want to find back our polynomial of g. Our divisor there was x plus 3, right? So since here we have used the remainder theorem, we didn't get the quotient. We only find the remainder since we were using the remainder theorem. So there will be no quotient. You have to multiply by the quotient here plus the remainder. This is the remainder theorem. But then you can be able again to find the remainder using what we call the long division. To find the remainder using the long division. Uh, long division is grade, uh, grade 9, uh, not grade 9, grade 7, to standard 5. Uh, let's say you have 3 and 8. So we call this a long division method. 8 divided by 3, that is Two. We started by dividing. It's eight divided by three. So how many times three goes to eight? It's two. Three times two. That is six. And then the next step you have to subtract six, which is your product. 
8 minus 6, that would be 2. Let's see if this can continue. 2 divided by 10, that is 0. Therefore, this means that would be your remainder. That's your remainder. Same thing if you are to use your device here. You have x plus, right? And then our dividend, it was, can you read the dividend? It was 3 x cubed plus 5x x squared minus 7x minus 21. Right. As you can see here, we've got our divisor and we've got our polynomial. And then here is our whole shape. Here is our product after multiplying. And then you have to subtract the product from the polynomial. And then the answer that you obtain here, you call it the remainder. Same thing here. You start by dividing. After dividing, you multiply to find the product and then we subtract here for you to divide we only use x to divide but to find the product you are going to use the two terms you are going to say 3x cubed 3x cubed divided by x so this goes to that you are left with 3x squared. You write 3x squared there. And then the next step, you multiply. When multiplying, you use the two numbers. It's x times 3x squared. That would be 3x squared. And then you use 3 now. 3 times 3x squared. That would be plus 9x squared. Remember, I said from here, this is your product. And then from there, you take your polynomial and subtract the product. 3x squared minus 3x squared, that would be 0. 5x squared minus, you are subtracting, which means this sign will change to minus. It's 5x squared minus 9x squared. That would be minus 4x squared. And then remember what it said. If a polynomial f of x is divided by ax minus b, such that a polynomial does not contain x. So here we still have x. We need to drop down everything there. It's minus. 7x minus 21. You divide again up until there is no x. It's minus 4x squared. Minus 4x squared divided by x. This goes, you are left with minus 4x. And then the next step will multiply. Negative 4x times x, this will be minus 4x squared. 3 times negative 4x, that will be minus 12x. We subtract again. It's minus 4x squared. Minus negative 4x squared. So negative times negative is positive, that would be minus 4x squared plus 4x squared, which is 0.
Same thing here. This sign will change to the plus because it's minus 7 x squared minus the root of that. So this will be positive 5 x. And then we drop down at 21. Our main is still have x. It still contains x. Therefore, we divide again. 5x divided by x, that will be plus 5. x times 5x, that is 5x, 3 times 5, it's plus 15. This and that, it's 0. The sign will change here to the minus. So it's minus 21. Minus 15, that's the answer. Minus? Negative 36. 36. So there, there is no longer x here. Which means negative 36 is our remainder. Negative 36 is our remainder. So I want us to go back and check if we are going to get our problem here. Remember we said our polynomial, it was g of x equals, we take our divisor, which is x plus 3, our quotient, our quotient, it's 3 x squared minus 4x plus 5. Plus the remainder, remainder x minus 36. And then we have to solve the brackets. x times 3x squared, that is 3x cubed. x times negative 4x, that would be minus 4x squared. This and that, it's plus 5x, this and that plus 9x squared, this and that, negative 12x, 3 times 5, it's plus 15, minus 36. So it will be like that. Let's add the right terms quickly. Is there anything which I have cube? So we've got 3x cube. 9x squared minus 4x squared plus 5x squared and then we've got minus 12x plus 5x minus 7x any constant number here or oh, it's 50 minus 36 negative 21 so when you look here, we've got the same polynomial as you can see up there. This means that, as we have mentioned here, it's d, which is our divisor, times the quotient, plus the remainder, you will get the polynomial g of x. Right, let's continue. 